you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question before listening on. Our first step is to find the distance from wire 1 to point P. And we can do that by using the Pythagorean theorem and the given distances. And when you solve for that distance, you get approximately 37.4 centimeters. And we're going to use the standard unit of meters, so we'll just have to move the decimal over two places to the left. So we'll have 0.374 meters. Next, we can calculate the magnetic field that wire 1 is producing at point P by plugging in the known values into this equation. And when we simplify that, we get a magnitude magnetic field of approximately 1.71 times 10 to the minus 6 Tesla. And if we wish, we can actually express that as just micro Tesla by taking off the times 10 to the negative 6 part. So we have 1.71 micro Tesla. Now, according to the right hand rule, if we took our thumb and pointed it out of the page and we curled our fingers in the direction of the magnetic field at point P, we can see that the magnetic field would be cycling in a sort of counterclockwise fashion. Now, what that means is that point P, the magnetic field would be pointing off in a perpendicular direction to this red line right here. So we could extend a vector at point P pointing in this direction and this would be the direction of the magnetic field produced by wire one. Now it turns out that we're gonna to have to break that magnetic field into components. So we're gonna have an X component that points to the right, and then we're gonna have a Y component that points straight up. Now to find the magnitude of these components, we're gonna actually have to know this angle right here. We do know that this angle is 90 degrees, and so to find the angle marked theta, we're gonna actually have to figure out this angle. Now remember, we know this opposite side is 13.3 centimeters, and we know this side right here is 35 centimeters. And so we can find this angle by using the inverse tangent, because we have the opposite side and the adjacent side. And if you do the inverse tangent, you get an angle of approximately 20.8 degrees. Now that's that angle right here. We know this one is 90, and so we can easily find this angle now because they all have to add up to 180 degrees. So you should be able to figure out that this angle right here is 69.2 degrees and with it we can now find the X and the Y component. Now let's hold on to these components and consider wire 2. Wire 2 carries the same amount of current except now that current is pointing into the page. So the magnetic field produced by wire 2 will now be going in a clockwise fashion and when it gets to point P it's going to be pointing, again, perpendicular to that position. So here is a vector for the magnetic field produced by wire 2. We would also have to break that magnetic field into its X and its Y component. I realize the drawing is getting a little bit crowded, but hopefully we can see that the Y component of the second magnetic field is going to cancel with the Y component of the first magnetic field. Also, if we look carefully, the X component of the second magnetic field is pointing in the same direction as the X component of the first magnetic field. So they will have the same magnitude and the same direction. In other words, B1X and B2X both point in the positive X direction with the same value. That means that the total magnetic field will be pointing in the X direction and it will have a magnitude of 1.214 micro tesla. So this is the magnitude of the total magnetic field and the direction would be in the positive x direction. Notice that there is no magnetic field in the y direction and there is no magnetic field in the z direction either. So these would be the correct answers to the first part of the question. Now, to find the magnitude and direction of the magnetic force acting on the electron for part B, we just have to consider the following equation. Because the particle is an electron, we know the value of Q. The magnitude of the velocity was given in the question, and we just figured out the magnetic field. So let's plug in. And when we simplify that, we get a value of negative 1.012 times 10 to the minus 21 newtons. And the direction of that magnetic force is in the y direction. Now, because of the negative sign, we know that the electron is experiencing a magnetic force that tends to push it in this direction here. For part C, 
we need the net force to equal zero. So that means the downward magnetic force must be canceled by the upward electric force. So we could set the magnitude of the electric force equal to the magnitude of the magnetic force. We'll divide both sides by Q to isolate the electric field, E. And then we'll plug in the magnitude of the force and the magnitude of the charge. And when we simplify that, we get an electric field magnitude of approximately 0 0.00631 newtons per coulomb. That's the magnitude of the electric field for the direction. Remember that the electric force was pointing up. That means the electric field has to be pointing in the opposite direction. Because remember, for electrons, the electric force points in the direction opposite to the electric field. That's so important, it's worth stating again, for electrons, as well as other negative charges, the electric force and the electric field will point in opposite directions. That means that this electric field would be pointing in the negative y direction. So we can actually stick a negative sign on it and then add the j hat notation. Alternatively, we can say that EY is equal to negative 0.00631 newtons per coulomb, and then both EX and EZ are equal to zero newtons per coulomb. So this would be the final answer to part C of the question. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please click that thumbs up icon and also subscribe to the channel. Remember, you're welcome to send in your own question to this email address and I'll do my best to respond to it on YouTube.